So, a charcoal canister on your car. Have you replaced one recently? Do you know what it does on your car? And can you replace an original one with a cheap one instead? Or has it got to be OEM? In this video, I'm going to answer all those questions and the one I take off my car, I'm going to be checking inside with the help of this thing. Yeah, it could go badly. How's it going? I'm Kevin, welcome to Murph Coast Workshop, where you'll find content on car DIY and modifications. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about this thing here. It's called a charcoal canister, and you may have seen it in your car for a number of years like myself, and never really understood what it does or why it's there. So in this video, I'll explain that, and we're also going to be changing my one out for a cheap version, one that I got off Amazon, when the real replacement version is five times the price, and let you know the outcome of that whether the car still runs properly or whether it's starting to show fault because of it. So what does the charcoal canister do? Well, it basically filters out fuel vapors from your engine and redirects them back into the engine so they can be burnt off. It uses a purge valve to regulate when these vapors get pushed back into the engine. I think on my car, it's called the N80 valve. And with that purge valve, pushing the vapors back into the engine can get burnt off again. And this makes the car greener for the environment and also helps lower the emissions as well at the same time. So why might you want to change your charcoal canister on your car? Well, you might find that you're having problem passing emission tests on your MOT. You might find that the engine management light has come on just strangely for no reason at all. You might be getting strong fuel smells in the cabin inside the car. Or like me, you might think that 94,000 miles is quite enough for this thing to have done and that you want to change it for a new one. So that's what I've done today on my car. And comment down below if you had to change your charcoal canister for any reason at all, whether it's just because, again, you wanted to just do it because you thought it had done enough miles and you wanted to put a new one on, or you actually finding it was causing problems with emissions on your MOT and you had to change it because of that. So when it came to ordering a new one for my car, what I did was I jumped on Amazon, typed the part number in, and there was one advertised for about 30 quid, which I was quite surprised with because I knew they're about four or five times the price normally brand new from the dealership. I ordered it and about three days later it arrived through the door and opened up the packaging and there was some Chinese stickers on it. Uh, it seemed to have some sort of scratched part number off the top. It was all scraped off some way, so this had me worried. And this had me thinking, oh, I should just got the original, paid the extra money for it and just got brand new original parts. But I thought, oh, I'll try and put it on the car, see how the car runs. And so far it's actually been perfect. It hasn't had any engine faults at all. It's not been running rough. I've not had engine management lights come on. So, so far so good. And what I'll do is I'll quickly show you how to change it over if you're not too sure. This is obviously on my engine, on the 2 litre TFSI engine, but I think generally they're quite easy to change over because they just sit in this kind of circuit for the fuel levers to come in and come back out. So they shouldn't have any major parts in the way. But let's go and have a look at taking this off my car. So here is an engine bay on my car here. A strange bit on the top where it's been rubbed off. Yeah, like I said, it did have a bit worried, but it's been okay since. So what you do for my car is you just release this clamp here and remove this hose. This hose then stays on the car. I take that hose out of the way. And then this pipe here, which runs all the way to the back, you can see that there, it's this one here. And yeah, it's a bit fiddly, but you need to try and release, release the clamp from this bit down here. You have to push in the tab and pull it up firmly at the same time. And then this whole pipe comes up with the canister. And then here, you can see it's just located in these bits here. And it just needs a very firm pull up the way to release it from this groove. And oh, there's this original one here from the one I took off the car, but you would just then fit the new pipe, which you get, well, which I got with my one, fit the new pipe onto the top of the canister on this hole here. Just sits in place, firm push down to lock it in place, and then locate these back in place on the bracket that holds this. And there's a closer look at the clip that you've got to push that left hand white tab in, and it separates those bits inside, and that makes it pull off a lot easier. And yes, you just locate that end back over the pipe that came from, and that should be that. So now for the fun part, we're going to take that 94,000 mile old charcoal canister and I'm going to use this to put it in half and we're going to see what it's like inside. But before I do cut that thing in half, I'm going to just say, I'm going to use my thumb to say, give the video a thumbs up if you can. Don't forget if you're mobile, you can just tap the screen and the thumbs up button will be in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. So do that just now before I lose this thumb. 
in a sawing accident. So let's get started. I'm just going to say as well, I'm going to keep this pipe just as a spare because there's no point in throwing this out in case the other one gets damaged or in case I accidentally nick the other one on the car just now with a tool or something. So right, let's see what's inside this. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Well, I was expecting I was expecting charcoal, but I wasn't expecting I don't know what I was expecting actually. That's what 94,000 miles looks like. It's just a pile of charcoal. Obviously that's got a bunch of carbon and fuel vapours stored in it. So inside, I don't know if you can see this very well, but there's two sides to it. The fuel vapours go in one end of these pipes here, pass down through one segment, down to the bottom, and then up through the other side and up out the other one. There's kind of the filter paper there. It's really badly clogged. On the new one, it's not like that at all. You can actually push that out. So yeah, this is actually really badly choked up with carbon. You can see it's coming off my hand. So yeah, that was quite a surprise to find what's inside there. I don't know what I was expecting really, but uh, yeah, the weak charcoal balls is how it's made up with the two weak foam filters as well and they stop the balls from getting sucked up through the pipes and into the engine bay as well, so that's their purpose. And it wasn't particularly bad for having 94,000 miles on it, apart from obviously covered in carbon. But if I have, by the way, called it a carbon canister and not a charcoal canister, it's just a, a mix up and people tend to refer to them both as, as the same thing, so. Anyway, if you've had this and you've replaced it and it's not fixed your engine, if it's running rough or running badly or you're getting really bad fuel smells in the car, but then possibly it could be something else I might have covered it in this video up here where I had problems with my car running badly, wasn't starting properly, bad smell of fuel as well and altogether I had to do a kind of fault finding process before Christmas and managed to get working again. Click that video up there if you want to see that. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video or found it entertaining in any way at all and don't forget to hit subscribe down below as well if you want to catch more content because there's loads more coming this year. Really excited to film it and share it with you as well. So catch you later guys. Thanks so much.